Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your host for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst. We are in the beautiful week 8 of the After Hours Gaming League season and we officially now have everyone uh, divided up into their actual uh, correct divisions now. Uh, so we're going to see some chance to still make it to the playoffs from uh, the uh, Baron division, but luckily for us today we are treated to three games all from the Vile Mod division. And our first game of the day will be between Microsoft One on the blue side and Amazon Amazon on the red side. Microsoft One, of course, uh, a company that made this beautiful uh, OS I am running to bring you this match today. And they are playing for the charity Charity Water. Uh, that charity works to build clean water infrastructure in parts of the world that don't have easy access to clean water. Very important charity there, uh, especially given how those parts of the world are very underprivileged and need our help. Um, so bringing them the bare essential of clean water, <laughs> definitely a worthy goal there. Um, and for the red side, Amazon, Amazon, they are playing for Child's Play. Child's Play is a charity that brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers the joy of gaming to try and help them reconnect with their childhood, uh, get past any trauma they've gone through uh, in this, uh, the circumstances they went through to end up in a domestic abuse shelter or the hospital. Um, typically, if you go through such a traumatic experience as a kid, I mean, as adults when we go through traumatic experiences, it takes us really hard. Um, and a long time to get over it. So we definitely want to help ease the transition for those kids to get in a post-trauma lifestyle that's much more familiar to what we want kids to have as their lifestyle. So we try and bring them the, glo the joy of gaming through that charity and just a fantastic charity there overall. So uh, with that aside, let's get into the pick band phase here of this match. So. I do want to talk about a little bit about a week five match because on this stream we actually streamed this exact matchup so this will be a rematch of week five before the divisions were set uh, and in that match we did see uh, let me see here uh, LeBlanc J4 and a Callista Janna's lane uh, that spiraled out of control for the Microsoft One team. Um, and it looks like, just looking at the ban phase uh, really quickly here without getting into too much detail on that yet, um, we do not see any bans that mirror those specific picks. Of course, we do see the J4 and Janna are second and third picked away from this blue side, as we do see them walking in that Callista trying to mimic some of that success as much as possible from that game. Um, but they did opt to lock in the Morgana first, and it looks like with the Maokai pick that will be a Morgana either in the mid or support role. And uh, so not not necessarily disrespecting <laughs> the loss they had earlier, uh, but confident if they can just pick some of those power picks away, they will be able to shift the course of that battle should a similar matchup uh, come out of here. Uh, confident is Amazon Amazon on the red side. And we do got to remember... Uh, that Amazon's top lane rumble in that match did do quite a bit of damage. Uh, was a, had a very respectable showing there. It looks like they are hovering over the Mundo right now. Um, and that will be locked in. So Mundo actually going to be coming out here. Definitely a solid pickup there. Uh, given that it is going to be leaning against a Maokai, there is going to be a Morgana uh, either support in the worst case scenario as far as that Mundo is concerned. Um, which will bring a lot of mixed damage, especially if that Nunu comes out uh, and gets locked in as well. Mundo, of course, loves to rush uh, that... Uh, um, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I'm blanking. Spirit Visage <laughs> to get that extra um, uh, passive bonus on his heal, on his ultimate, so he can sustain even harder in the early game um, once he hits that level 6. So having a Morgana, having a uh, Maokai in the top lane for him to lane directly against is going to bring out enough uh, AP damage 
to where he'll be able to rush that spear visage and not have to worry about um, being a little vulnerable to any AD in the early game. This is, of course, assuming there is no lane swap coming out uh, that puts him up against the Morgana Callista lane, though, again, with Morgana being the primary poke uh, for that lane that he'll be trying to just cleaver farm uh, from a distance, the Spear of Visage still would be pretty good on him. Um, so overall, Mundo's going to be happy in this matchup, especially with that lock-in of Orianna uh, <laughs> following the ball delivery systems of Maokai and uh, this Nocturne here. So he's going to definitely be taking some AP damage throughout the course of the game, so that Spear of Visage will unquestionably be rushed on the Mundo. Um, we will keep our eyes peeled uh, to that top lane, um, to try and see if there's going to be any ganks from this Nocturne who's going to be trying to go up to that top lane as much as possible to keep that Mundo down pre-6 and also once he's started on that item path to build that Spirit Visage go up there and try and actually bring the threat of physical damage that Nocturne certainly does bring um, and with the slows from the Maokai with the fear from the Nocturne that will be a lot of auto attack harassment coming onto this Mundo so he's definitely going to have to uh, respect that Nocturne when he comes to gank if he's going to want to rush that Spear of Visage. And we do see a Nivea going to be locked in for the mid lane. Beautiful. I just get so jazzed whenever I see a Nivea. Um, oh, so great. <laughs> I, personally, I love that champion. I love seeing that champion. It's, it's always, you know the meta is healthy when we're in a balanced enough state where you see that champion coming out in the mid lane. And we're actually going to see a spicier Nivea play. Instead of um, going for the heal summoner, they are going to take Ignite here, which is going to be very bold. Um, certainly, Orianna is not the uh, most pre-six kill oriented mid laner. There's a lot more uh, damage oriented mid laners here. Uh, that would be a significant threat for Nivea. So perhaps seeing that Orianna, knowing it's going to be a bit more passive of a lane, Nivea is opting to take take that ignite, try and mirror that kill pressure, see if uh, pre six there's any skirmishes, if that ignite being uh, popped onto Orianna can discourage any sort of all in that can come in, but. Without that heal, that's going to create a large uh, target in this middle lane for Nocturne to come and gank repeatedly so. And especially with the fear that can start onto the egg and proc as soon as Anivia comes out of that egg, Anivia is going to be taking a lot of auto har attack harassment from that Nocturne when she uh, does get ganked and her egg does get popped. So we're going to see some cautious play, I would think, from Anivia. I hope. Uh, at least we're going to see some cautious play from Anivia. It's probably not going to be, despite the summoner pickup, uh, too much more of an aggressive lane. Uh, pro probably going to be just about as uh, safe uh, play from Anivia as you typically see, if not more safe, really. Uh, but overall, to speak uh, in general really quickly about the Pikman phase, of course, Janna was a prime pick for both these sides here, uh, both of their supports do love to bust out that Janna and bring the noise. Uh, definitely going to be a good pick with that J4 and the Jinx late game, bringing out quite a bit of damage with that extra AD boost. Uh, and in the middle and early game with that extra AD boost onto J4, who is already a nightmare early game with that uh, damage he does have. Though he is uh, does scale a little bit weaker now into the late game, after the minor nerf on his armor, though with the amount of magic damage coming out from this blue side, uh, hopefully that won't be too much of a factor for him. Uh, of course, we do see the Nidalee, uh favorite pick here uh, in the jungle for this red side was banned out, given how just how strong of a pick she is right now. Uh, good target ban there, also just a general good power ban pick. Uh, but they were able to secure Dr. Mundo, uh, which is, again, a favorite of this uh, top laner here for the red side, who you can tell is very comfortable on the champion taking teleport and ghost. Definitely uh, the right choice to pick on a Mundo, so you get that extra movement speed. You can stick to people a lot better. And again, to speak about this Callista though, that is the prime pick for this blue side. Definitely a uh, very favored uh, comfort pick here for this blue side, and with Again, the game where Callista did go pretty insane in the bottom lane. 
Uh, we're going to have to keep our eyes on that bottom lane to see with the slight changes to put Janna on the other side, give her a Morgana support instead if Callista will still be able to break out the insane <laughs> killing spree she went on uh, like in the previous game. So overall, as far as team fights are concerned, we're going to be looking for, of course, that Nocturne Ultimate bringing the ball delivery system to them. <laughs> Maokai also can chase in. Uh, there's a lot of pick potential with both of them. If Even if they're out of position, not necessarily needing to land the perfect pick, just needing to uh, get that Morgana Q onto somebody from a distance or have vision on them and have Nocturne ult to them and then use the uh, fear to slow them down so you can get that follow-up CC of the Maokai, of the Morgana. And then that would spell doom <laughs> for anyone on this red side here. Uh, overall, for the red side, it looks like the primary source of engage is going to be uh, that J4 flag and dragging in, throwing down the cat Cataclysm to try and catch somebody out, uh, try and bring that initial damage, create that zoning that his ultimate does bring. As we really quick move all these uh, items around. We are going to see that Boots first start, uh, Boots 5 on Mundo. So looking to just dodge as much damage here. And of course Maokai taking the flask first. Not looking to create any real uh, kills early in that top lane. Just going to be a farm fest. Uh, though again Maokai definitely does want to throw down as much harassment pre-6 as possible. So we'll see if uh, he is able to do that. So then Nocturne can come up and get a beautiful ward here uh, from that Callista. MVP Ward <laughs> spotting out four members uh, that were waiting for the counter invade here. Uh, but unfortunately, they will not be finding him. Maokai seeing that, gonna step a little far forward uh, to get some good spotting information out. But already having placed his ward in the tri bush, Mundo will just be spotting him out and we'll just watch him walk away. But yeah, again, uh, Mundo and J4 are going to be the primary source of engage. Mundo is not a very strong engage. Mundo. Uh, does have the cleaver slow. He's very good at chase and uh, following up uh, picks. Um, but there's not much pick potential overall with this team. It's going to be uh, actually a great chance to showcase that Anivia ability uh, to land her uh, the CC abilities on her, uh, what normally just uses damage spells, and see if she can create a lot of potential from those. As we, it looks like we're actually going to see J4 opting to start blue here. Uh, an old school start from this J4, but with that Janna shield, uh, that's actually going to be a very easy blue buff to start with, um, as opposed to the more traditional uh, Grom start that we see from this blue side end. Uh, that will be going down without too much uh, trouble here. J4 opting to save the smite as well. Very interesting play. We'll see where he decides to go. It looks like... He will be going for a quick invade here to try and counter jungle that red. Very beautiful play here. Getting that extra heavy leash from this bottom lane on the red side. Getting that... Um, actually, we see some wavering around. It looks like he's just going to try and catch out a kill here. And After not seeing the Nocturne, he does realize that Nocturne is at Wolves right now. So, uh, noting that that start is going to be a little bit slower... He's going to take the red for himself, and with that smite up, he will be able to smite back a lot of health here, and there it is. Uh, so he will be able to get that just fine, though actually we see lots of damage coming out in this bottom lane. Both summoner heals used, uh, perhaps a little bit aggressive on the blue side, though it did immediately force the red side summoner heal out. So after that uh, delicious invade, we're going to see a J4 coming in for a gank here. But will there be enough damage to start off? That's the Ignite, and the Rend will get the first blood onto this Morgana, who does not actually land the Q onto J4, so he will be able to get the immediate return kill onto that Callista. But that is first blood going over to this blue side on Callista. Definitely not what this uh, red side wanted to see, especially after their previous match where that Callista was a force to be reckoned with. So we're going to have to see how that evolves here. Uh, getting that return kill uh, will definitely help them out. Though unfortunately it was both just assists for the bottom lane of the red side. Uh, neither of them actually able to pick up the kill credit that did go over to J4. Who that will help them 
Uh, help get into these other lanes and start snowballing the rest of these other lanes around. But we also uh, won't see anything too spooky coming out here. Oops, as I pressed the wrong button here. We're looking to see a possible gank here in the mid lane, but it looks like they're going to offer. Actually, immediately killed back. We got to go back and see what happened there. Jinx comes back to lane, full health, trying to throw some harassment down into this bottom lane here, and just gets caught by a beautiful Q right past the minions, just smacking the minions in the face as it <laughs> scooted on by, and Callista able to solo out, uh, well, not solo out, but bring all the damage, only getting that initial CC from the Morgana, and that is just 100 zeros, the uh, Jinx here, with that chase potential, the kite, uh, offensive kite that she offers with her auto attacks. Beautiful play there, and that is exactly uh, what we want to see um, in this bottom lane for the blue side here. Actually, a beautiful Q again! Gonna force the flash out of this uh, bottom lane here from the Janna, and that is Silent J with the MVP Morgana plays here. But we do see a gank into this middle lane here. J4 gonna be enough to force him off as the egg does come down. Uh, and pop to give a nearly full health of Nivea again. Uh, but the egg is down from that gank. No summoners were used in that middle lane. So now Anivia gonna have to be very cautious when she plays. Because another gank could spell a kill here. Uh, and it is 2-1 to one right now despite that overall uh, 1,000 gold lead right now. In part due to that counter jungle putting the Nocturne behind here. J4 having a lot more free time to make these ganks happen where Nocturne has to farm up as hard as he can just to try and catch up here. And the Q actually dodged by both of them, getting some good counter harass down onto this Callista. But that's a lot of damage coming out onto her. Oh, and Janna's just barely going to make it away dodging the Q there from Callista. Good play there from Janna. Both of them to dodge the initial CC uh, from that Morgana. And then here comes the ultimate, and that's going to be the ignite as well. Going to be enough damage to take out Anivia. And that is exactly what we were just talking about. Let's watch that one more time, see what had happened here. Anivia already quite low, so just the initial Q over there and catches her. No summoner uh, flash coming out of that Anivia. Probably should have flashed as soon as she saw that ball get within range, uh, let alone see that channel, but goodness gracious. I mean, that channel time is not the longest in the game, so I certainly understand not having the time to react there, um, but that will cost her life since her egg was down, and that will be uh, another kill going over to this blue side, extending that lead even further to now 1,500 uh, gold here. And most importantly, we can see uh, the results of those uh, CS leads right now, in addition to obviously just having more gold for when they inevitably go back. We're starting to see the item advantage grow here. Excuse me, because of that, but also look at the CS advantage. Over uh, about a dozen CS lead here in the bottom lane, in the mid lane now, almost 10 CS lead. And now in the top lane, 10 CS lead there as well. In the jungle where CS are worth so much more. Um, let alone discounting the ganks that J4 has brought to make those kills happen in the, both the mid and bottom lane by popping that mid lane egg. Uh, as we see Mundo gonna trade and then just pop his ultimate eventually and heal on up. So that, this looks like some action. Not really. <laughs> um, but yeah, with that uh, CS lead that's growing, that's really gonna extend the gold lead even further beyond what those ganks have been getting them. As we see, Anivia is going to be picking up that blue buff onto herself now. So she will be able to sustain out here uh, in the middle lane using that ultimate to farm up, shove the wave, and try and get some CS lead, uh, or that CS lead evened up, I should say. Um, as we see, Mundo doing his best to farm out with the briefcases. We're actually looking for Nocturne to do a gank here onto that Anivia. He does not... Uh, have the vision here of where that Anivia is, so he's just gonna decide to get that crab instead, get a little bit more vision for his Mundo. Make sure, or excuse me, for his Maokai to make sure that Mundo 
uh, is not going to get any last minute help here. And possibly look to make his way up into the top lane. As we see, the ultimate's coming out from both sides here. Uh, as a Nocturne ultimate actually comes out as well. Great Anivia wall there to block the follow-up. Uh, but again, we do see Mundo quite low here. His ultimate is up, so trying to bait this one out. And as soon as he has the chance, he throws out on the ultimate. And as soon as Maokai sees that, he will back away. But there's the flash from Anivia. Action all over the map right now, as soon as those junglers were spotted out. And Maokai looking to trade again. Mundo taking a lot of damage again from those abilities he uses himself as well. If he's not getting tons of damage out, those are not helpful for him. They're just burning his own health and... Jinx taking a little bit of harassment from that Morgana, but unfortunately Callisto was not close enough to follow up successfully on that. And Mundo again, so low that, oh, Maokai just barely not able to get Mundo. Uh, I mean, of course, m any amount of health onto Mundo seems like it's a nightmare amount of health, but just a sliver of his health bar is left right now. Mundo also opting to stay in this top lane, knowing that that Nocturne ultimate is still down. Gonna try and stay up here and farm out as much of this wave as possible. Stay from a distance. Try and use those briefcases to get that CS. And it looks like Maokai is not gonna try and challenge him too hard at that turret. Unfortunately, Morgana does miss the binding there. And with J4 looking to come around, actually gonna opt to not flag and drag over. Mundo so low in that top lane. Uh, looks like he will be spotted out by that ward. And great flash there. By the Callista, who then follows it up with the jump over the wall and the ultimate onto the Morgana to dodge the Jinx ultimate AoE uh, hitting her by default. And here comes Nocturne, who's gonna be able to throw it down. Uh, the, the, excuse me, hold, hold that thought because it looks like Anivia with that ignite gonna have her egg pop. She did have the passive active yet again. And that shield from Janna a little bit too late to block that damage out. But that will be the Anivia passive going down, or supposedly coming up just in time, actually, to get that down, to prevent the death. Uh, but great, again, I want to emphasize that ultimate from Jinx would have still hit uh, the Callista were she uh, not able to, as we see Anivia being a bit of a jerk here. Uh, were she not able uh, to get the uh, Morgana ulted to her to block it from hitting Morgana and then hitting Callista in the AoE portion of it, that could have very well been the kill onto Jinx. So fantastic coordination there in this bottom lane from that support and ADC working together very well. Uh, and this is exactly why we saw that Callista go insane. The, the play on that is just expert as far as this uh, uh, blue team is concerned here. We're going to see a little bit of harassment going back and forth, but again, two of the, uh, I don't want to say tankiest, but I'll say it, tankiest members in the game. <laughs> Not really going to have too much action happening up here in this top lane, uh, as Mundo actually does miss some of that CS under the turret, unfortunately taking a little bit too much harassment. But now he does have some help from this J4, uh, and Maokai does go in, he uses all of his abilities to do so, and he does have the ultimate running, gonna delay some of that damage, but it's not gonna be enough, and that will be a second kill onto this J4, who's going to have two kills now and be able to bring a lot of damage to those other lanes. Callista trying to zone those uh, minions under the turret wave, uh, and now a simple QW combo gonna be enough to take out the caster minions for this uh, Orianna so she certainly does have to be careful of that Anivia using the wall uh, to get those minions or to get her zoned into that ultimate and taking quite a bit of damage there but chugging those health bots gonna be alright as we see Callista farming from a distance with those Rens Marianna uh, trying to get a lot of damage onto this uh, Janna, but hold that thought because we I did uh, adjust the camera here so we did not see jump back pretty far here to watch this. It looks like, oh, Anivia actually did not go B. I thought Anivia, I saw that recall on the minimap and then got a little bit of tunnel vision into this bottom lane here. Uh, but let's keep our eyes peeled onto that uh, Oriana here. See what she sees right now. There 
Uh, Ism calls out on that J4, but she did not... Oh, that was a great Anivia wall, and the J4 was able to just barely catch her on the tip to make sure that she uh, did get the CC from J4 and was not able to react there uh, with anything to prevent that. So unfortunately uh, for Oriana, that will be a kill going over to this Anivia. And that is exactly the kind of pressure that we were talking about from this J4 earlier with those two kills on him. Going to be able to create a lot of pressure in those lanes. So we see a good dodge from Janna here of that Morgana binding. And Maokai looking to defend this ward as long as possible. Going to probably just trade that pink ward here for the normal ward. And that will be what happens here. As Mundo actually keeping on him pretty well. And going to be trading pretty effectively actually for Mundo having to burn that health as long as that's on. Traded pretty well. And uh, he does have his ultimate up so he will be able to heal right back up though. Uh, we do see those fast charges being chugged by the Maokais. Mundo again looking to get aggressive on him, though there is a lot of aggression in this bottom lane as well. There's the ultimate from Janna, but it's not going to be enough because uh, the pop of the ultimate from Nocturne had not happened yet. So he's going to be able to uh, go back and get that kill. Let's watch that one more time again in this bottom lane. See if we can back up a little bit further here because it looks like things were already happening here with this Nocturne who came in through the top side. It looks like uh, Jinx was actually going around there to see what's up and drop that pink ward right onto a Genki Nocturne. That's got to be terrifying. Was able to get the Flame Chompers down to protect herself there, but unfortunately Nocturne was able to just use the charge of his ultimate to go over to that uh, Janna and get the kill there. We also see Anivia uh, roaming up to that top lane to try and create some more plays for that Mundo. If they can get this Mundo ahead, uh, he can certainly be that frontline tank that just cannot be beat. The, the Mundo Nightmare we're all familiar with. Um, and that's exactly what they need uh, for this red side. If they want to get back into this game here. Uh, let's not take that uh, too uh, uh, pessimistically here. It is only a uh, sub 2k lead right now. Uh, as far as gold is concerned. So... Uh, certainly a lot of potential to outplay and speaking of outplay there's the flash we were talking about earlier and standing in that the whole time uh, uh standing in that ultimate the whole time was oriana not flashing that entire time let's watch that again watch specifically how oriana plays here she's stunned she's blocked knocked a little bit more towards that and then chooses not to continue to walk towards anivia because i mean that would have been an easy skill shot for anivia uh but unfortunately for Oriana, walking back out the long way did give her enough damage to where that last skill shot was enough to kill her. And that will be another kill going on to this Anivia, and that's exactly what we want to see from this red side if they want to get into this game. Especially if they can immediately follow it up with a kill onto this Maokai. Mundo taking quite low, gonna be uh, having to back off from that minion damage. Which would have been enough to turn the tides of that trade, but... Maokai is going to be forced to be here and does not have that teleport up so Mundo will be able to shove that minion wave in, deny some CS here in the top lane and extend his lead a little bit further onto this Maokai though. Maokai does now have that Rod of Ages and here we see Morgana actually going to throw down the ultimate <laughs> going to be thrown back in a little bold there. Um, but unfortunately that uh, Morgana ultimate will not land on anybody because she was pulled to safety by that Callista. Um, perhaps she could have waited a little bit longer, but without that Zonius completed, uh, opting to play it a little bit safer here in this bottom lane. Don't want to lose that advantage uh, if they can. And it looks like J4 is lurking around here. And sending out the ghost will be Callista, who's able to, again, hop right over that J4 wall. And then that spells absolutely nothing happening in this bottom lane for that ultimate. A lot of damage coming down onto this blue side, but aside from that, no actual kills uh, going over to this red side here, just because uh, that J4 uh, Cataclysm is able to be so easily countered by the Callista Hop uh, and the Morgana Black Shield able to block out any follow-up CC that would come from it. But certainly for anyone who's played Callista, 
Uh, you're familiar with how tricky it is to actually hop out of that Dre 4 wall. You do have to actually position yourself pretty carefully there if you want to do it properly. As we see, Mundo actually going to have to pop his ultimate to try and survive here. Uh, of course, being Mundo, he will be able to do so. Uh, but J4 back in this bottom lane, able to defend that turret, delay uh, what might be the inevitable there. And Callista going to be hopping, going to be again showing us those mechanics, going to be able to be locked into the wall by that Janna. And that will be the Jinx ultimate, just barely missing over the shoulder of that Morgana. So unfortunately not a follow-up kill there for the double, but a single kill uh, in this bottom lane going over to Jinx here. And Orianna placing the ball there, checking that dragon. Uh, does have her ultimate up, so wisely the red side going to try and pull out the dragon. Actually, they are not able to do so. They keep trying to back away, but end up just taking a little bit extra damage. And with that Scuttle Crab pretty low... Uh, that could be some wasted time getting that scuttle low for nothing. And unfortunately, uh, Blue Side's not able to make anything happen out of it uh, with that Nocturne Ultimate up, but just out of range or did not choose to, I guess, in this middle lane. Uh, opting to create that mid lane pressure instead and go for a counter jungle here. He does throw down the ward deep within the jungle. So while they gave up that dragon, they will be smiting away this red buff. Uh, from the red side here. I'm going to leave the small camp to be extra annoying. And with that minion pressure in the middle lane here, uh, that will be the turret going down. So overall, uh, with that little bit of extra damage they were able to get on that turret, the bottom lane turret, soon to follow though, that was already so low. Uh, that had to be expected from this blue side here. And actually, Callista going to be taken out by Jinx, who's excited... And she's just so excited, that last shot, the Q, was not soon enough. And the last rocket got off at the end. Jinx able to get the double kill with almost no help from the Janna aside from that shield. Giving her very critically some bonus AD she definitely needed there. But oh my gosh, the Jinx showing her mechanics as well to stick to people once she gets that passive proc. And oh my god, just like that. The tides of the uh, game have turned, and it's now looking like this red side does have the advantage coming to them. Overall, that is an equal amount of dragons for both sides here. With that single dragon stack giving them the bonus uh, ability power and attack damage, and Jinx the turret destroyer showing why I gave her that namesake. <laughs> I'm sure other people agree with me on that. Um, I have actually yet to hear other people call her that, so I'm going to continue to say that's my namesake I've given, given to her. Uh, taking that turret down, uh, getting them on the board for the red side, and evening up that gold disparity quite a bit. We now see uh, the gold lead, as far as CS is concerned, actually going in Mundo's favor here in the top lane. Uh, same with the middle lane. Very much evened out now. Only uh, single digits uh, deficits in this mid lane. And actually exactly even in the bottom lane now. So with those two extra kills going over to the red side, the only thing that's really holding them back from having an outright gold lead right now uh, is that additional turret that they were not able to get. And Jinx is going to be clearing out that vision with a good pink ward there. It's nice to see that ADC actually spending the extra money getting those pink wards. Actually, J4 does miss with the flag and drag. The Cataclysm is going to be dipped out of... Uh, and that will be Nocturne ulting in, able to follow it up and get enough damage for the final Ren stack to get her. And we're focusing a little bit on this Anivia right here who will get away with the wall. But let's stick on the main battle and see what happened with that Janna. Uh, she was herself in the Cataclysm, so she was simply out of position here and had nowhere to go. And even the binding from Morgana landing, so that ultimate displacement did not have any effect in the long run. Uh, so... Unfortunately, that team fight evening it right back up for this blue side, giving them the slight gold advantage by uh, putting them in the lead for kills. Actually, a lot of damage going on that Callista. The very strong burst from this Anivia landing that full combo there with her ultimate, and again chunked away. Goodness gracious! Even through the Morgana and the Jinx ultimate to finish her. Oh my God, we gotta watch that in transit. But let's watch this again. Let's watch this setup here. Uh, about over half health, actually, is this Callista. And we see 
just a single that guided uh, uh, ability from Anivia it will land there Anivia gonna force the flash we see the coordination from the team here knowing exactly where she was and here comes the jinx rocket knowing where she is here it comes the douche <laughs> fantastic even with the uh, shield from Oriana even with the black shield from Morgana so much damage onto that Callista. That one well-placed, well-coordinated with her team skill shot from Jinx. And then all of a sudden, Jinx the turret destroyer alone. In the bottom lane, the pressure being created in the mid lane as they try and answer. Unfortunately, Mundo going to be for focused on in a dive here. That's going to be too much damage for even Mundo to sustain through. Uh, opting actually to not go for the... Uh, uh, Spirit Visage first, went for Warmogs first. Uh, might be regretting that now with the amount of damage. Only Nocturne was in that uh, dive up there. So he's going to actually, with the MR boots, um, have some magic resistance now built up. But definitely not the magic resistance he wants. Excuse me, he definitely wants that Spirit Visage. And Jinx was able to get this turret in the bottom lane here. So overall... That will be the turrets evened up now, three for three. Uh, one outer turret still for the blue side in the top lane, perhaps the least critical turret in the game uh, right now, for this stage in the game. Uh, and critically, that inhibitor turret in the bottom lane is exposed. So if they want to send a J4 down there uh, to split push, a Mundo to split push, a Jinx even to split push, if uh, they know something's going awry, uh, throw that Jinx down there and let her wail away on the turrets, clean out that entire bottom lane, uh, perhaps by herself. We need to see Morgana seeing the uh, movements from Jinx, gonna be able to uh, realize she was hanging out on top of a ward there. Throw down some further ward coverage uh, and clear out that ward that she realized she was on top of there. Anivia, great use of the wall there, actually gonna be spell shielded, uh, and then the black shield zoning out most of the damage there. Zeroing out most of the damage, I should say, uh, from that Anivia sick icicle shot. <laughs> and Janna actually opting to go for that last get hit on the uh, pink ward is going to force a trade from the uh, Nocturne ultimate and the um, Janna flash. So overall, they're definitely a pickup for this blue side, though. Now with four members there, they're going to have to be careful in this dragon pit. They did get the scuttle crab, so they will have uh, unbreakable vision of this dragon going down. But unfortunately, that might be all it amounts to. They do have all four here present, so they're going to be able to contest this here. And chunking out, it looks like the Mundo not going to be the best target. And actually, the Flash Smite Steel successful. And with Maokai chasing down, blocking down that Janna. She's going to be headed out, and with Jinx being knocked into the air, flailing around, J4 trying to be a good guy, get J4 saving Jinx, but unfortunately just going to give up his life as well. And that will be three kills for nothing thanks to that beautiful smite steal from the flash smite on this Nocturne. And it looks like that will be the entire team, unquestioned, total absolute coordination, going directly to this Baron. And very keyly, because of the smite charges they have, where you can charge up uh, two smites on that ability, Nocturne will have his smite up. And with that beautiful play before, we're fairly confident that they will be able to get this uh, without any contest here. Though they do try and contest, and that will be a uh, Orianna going down. And as soon as he lands in the egg, though, uh, Nivia will go down, and the summer heal will be enough. Just barely through that ignite, though, um, that Anivia was able to throw down right before she died um, to try and get that Nocturne killed. Uh, but unfortunately, that will not be enough with the Summoner Heal coming out. So overall, that will be a Dragon and Baron going over to this blue side and favorable kill exchanges each time. First time three for nothing and then a two for one follow up at the Dragon, or excuse me, at the Baron pit. And all of a sudden, I mean, as contested as this game has been thus far, all of a sudden we might start to see that change. As we see some more duty coming out 
from this red side, trying to clean up as much of that vision as possible. And let's, again, look at the ward placement. Aside from that ward that did just get cleared out, that pink ward, uh, the vision has not really crept into red side's jungle too deep. Uh, it's mostly just peripheral vision around these uh, contested objectives. Even that pink ward that we did see just cleaned out. Um, definitely good vision control from this red side. And we're seeing the standard uh, trinkets upgrades coming out a little early for this top lane. Uh, to try and get as much as possible uh, as far as uh, objective control is concerned. Or jungle control is concerned with vision. And J4 going to be sticking to these two. But going to not have enough. And let's... Z zoom back here to see what was happening while J4 jumped a little too deep there thinking they had caught them out um, J4 went a little deep and they tried to get um, that Orianna but uh, the ultimate in from Nocturne actually gonna be a little bit too far as well and Jinx with the ultimate gonna get him from the AoE uh, but that will be a Mundo going down immediately after to the Callista Kite and the Rend so overall, a 3 for 1 in favor of this blue side. And now, you gotta start to wonder, is this starting to be a repeat of last game where the blue side just starts to spiral out of control once Malkai gets those stacks on his Rod of Ages? Uh, once we get those kills onto the carries, particularly again this Callista, who it seems like this red side just does not have an answer for, unfortunately. Every time Callista is able to get on somebody, she stays on somebody, but a risky B from this uh, Oriana gonna spell the death of her, but as soon as she comes back, she hears her friends in trouble, and Callista to the rescue, gonna get the revenge kill immediately onto that Anivia. So that will be a one for one. And Anivia did not have the passive up, unfortunately, for her, so she wasn't able to. Uh, to get those cooldowns back up to try and do anything. But this is exactly the follow-up CC we were talking about earlier uh, with that initial engage from the Janna. Now the Mundo will be able to just cleaver this Maokai to death because he will not be able to get away. Gonna try and twist it advance onto Janna and actually gets her with the help from that Callista. Mundo getting very bold here going in after the Callista and the Smite coming out from J4. Gonna be thought of again a little too late. And able to chew through that is Callista with the triple kill in the top lane. Mundo definitely should not have followed that up. Did not have the armor built for that engagement there. Just now completing that Sunfire Cape. And it was simply too little too late. Uh, getting that, going a little deep for that kill um, onto the Maokai to finish him off. Certainly the right decision. Gonna want to trade one for one after the Callista got there. But trying to chase the Callista, simply too greedy. I mean, this is now an 11 and 4 Callista uh, who has just gone insane this game. And you cannot, uh, even with two members of you there in a two in a two versus one, if you're low, if you don't have CC to start this off, you cannot handle that Callista as this red team. So you're gonna need to disengage whenever she is around. And again, I hope they're paying attention to these stats as well because that's a 2, 1, and 12 Morgana. Absolutely insane Morgana as well. Uh, just like uh, when she was on that Janna supporting the Callista. That bottom lane together does insanely well. Morgana with a huge amount of kill, participa kill participation in this game. About 70% of the kills... Uh, have all had her involved and now with that Zonius completed with that lot or uh, locket en route uh, with the Aegis already completed she's gonna be bringing that extra uh, AoE uh, MR from for that Anivia to prevent that Anivia going too insane from good catches and it looks like it's gonna be largely reliant on the Jinx who only uh, on the Maokai has the uh, excuse me the frozen heart uh, c completed here to try and deal with that jinx so they're gonna look to try and get any sort of engage they can without Maokai getting within range of that jinx 
but it looks like he's gonna be on zone duty and the red side's gonna be forced to give up this dragon and just opt to try and push down mid and get that mid pressure and j4 actually gonna put on his shield to try and get as much damage onto this turret as well tank it up but that is now uh mundo tanking it up mundo gonna be perfectly fine with that ultimate now turned on but he is the only one there and even with uh being mundo four people on you is not something you're able to dodge so uh, with the kill onto Janna as well earlier. Oh, terrible time for that egg to be up. Gonna just be slowly killed afterwards there. Unfortunately, is a Nivea. Uh, though we do have some hero minions in the top lane taking that top, for the, top turret for the red side. Uh, there will certainly be an answer turret coming out here for the blue side. Momentarily here. Jinx gonna do her best to try and use those rockets to clear away the minions force as much damage as possible and she does have that ultimate if she can get somebody low but the risk of getting somebody low is exactly that you have Callista nearby you and you get just too low and that is exactly what happened there Callista looking to poke out this Mundo who only has a Sunfire build that's not a lot of armor on this Mundo who's going a little bit too far forward with that ward out to give them vision uh, will be the turret finally going down and Jinx, poor Jinx actually going down uh, to that Callista uh, who was able to just hop right to her. She tried to step a little bit forward to try and uh, get that damage onto those um, uh, members who are sieging that middle turret try and get them low enough to where she could use that ultimate from long range and she tries to use the ultimate here on the blue buff and actually does manage to steal it away there was no vision of this uh, coming out there is now, so just a blind check on that ultimate again. That would not have gone through the dragon pit, I don't believe. Let's check very quickly again the position she was at. Yeah, it does not look like... Uh, perhaps that actually could have gone through the dragon pit. So a very convenient ultimate then from Jinx, able to steal away a blue buff from Moriana uh, and keep it on their side. And with that blue buff now onto her, uh, she'll definitely have... Uh, that ultimate up for the next team fight, which will be very helpful for her, uh, considering she's gonna have to be the carry for this team. Um, if Anivia can get some good AoE damage down with that rod, uh, fully stacked now, yeah, I believe, yes, it is. Um, but unfortunately, she does not have uh, the death cap completed, and she opted to go for Moby Boots for that extra safety since she doesn't have the summoner hero. Heal, excuse me, and since she is part of the main uh, source of engagement and pick potential for their team. We're actually seeing uh, the banner of command come out for Morgana here. Perhaps looking to uh, get some team fight here. Uh, in a minion line, perhaps? Um, or perhaps throw that uh, ability down, the active down, on a minion in lane, let that lane start to split push, and then just go group in another lane so they have uh, that for that absolute for sure uh, split push going on in one of those lanes. We'll see how she uses it. The red side does spot out this Maokai who's coming here for the engagement, and he does get straight onto that Jinx who, with the uh, ultimate from Nocturne, is able to close that gap as well, but Janna able to use her ultimate to get him off, but then Janna caught on by the Maokai again, and that's a lot of damage shifting all around this team, and there's the Jinx going down, the smite, but there's double shields onto that Orianna, who will not die, and that will be the J4 going down as well, and that is going to be a 4-4-0 four, four, for this blue side, and that is gonna be the game going over to this blue team here. Microsoft One picking up the win again. And now you gotta feel uh, very painful. First of all, notably that uh, Callista did not go for the rune on Hurricane, went straight damage and attack speed. A very interesting and spicy build coming out of this Callista, uh, knowing that she had to put on the carry pants for that game. Um, once she started to get a lead here and the lane started evening up elsewhere, 
she really did exactly what she needed to and got the damage out onto those uh, key targets. And, I mean, when we look at the scoreboard overall, it was a fairly even game in most lanes. I mean, as even as a 4-12-19 Morgana is, uh, all these high kill participations skewing those first two numbers quite a bit. I mean, first of all, let's comment on that for a second. The team participation in all these kills that the blue side had was absolutely stellar. Um, definitely did exactly what they needed to do. Were always grouped when those fights happened. Did not let themselves uh, fall to any picks. But again, another absolute stunning performance by this Callista. And as we look over to the damage tabs here, Callista, over 30k damage to champions. I believe, yes, that is more than any two members on the entire red team combined. Um, so absolutely insane, Callista. If that does not draw bans or first picking away from this Microsoft One team going forward, especially uh, from if if there's another rematch uh, between them and Amazon Amazon, uh, who was on the red side of this game, I mean, Amazon, Amazon has to ban that. They have to respect that Callista pick now. Because, again, you're going to see these insane Callista scores apparently every game from uh, the AD carry for this blue team. So, definitely, we're going to have to see bans coming out there again. Uh, very strong performance, though, by the Jinx. Uh, though she did just eke over uh, going neutral there uh, in that last team. Unfortunately, was not able to spawn again to get that elixir popped. Um, but she was, uh, in a, in a game where they were on the back foot all the game, she had a positive score for the majority of the game, so, uh, if that, uh, overall game had gone differently, that would have been a jinx that went absolutely insane, so, definitely a good pick there, a strong showing on the jinx for this red side, but unfortunately, again, just not able to keep up with this Callista, who opted not to go for that, uh, uh, Runon Hurricane build, uh, which seemed to be the correct decision with that ghost blade active popped uh with the kiting potential of her built-in passive she's simply able to stick on you and if she gets ahead she's able to tear through people one at a time and that's exactly what we saw this game so fantastic play from this blue side especially again on those callista mechanics jumping over those j4 walls like they were nothing uh just expert play from that callista so can't say enough about that, Callista. <laughs> I'm a little caught up on that. Um, so I will let, mercifully let that be the end of the cast here. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you uh, enjoyed the cast, definitely stay tuned to this channel. I will have uh, more casts throughout the day. We will have uh, two more casts today. And you can always see my casts uploaded to the YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't want to catch the live stream, if you want to watch at your convenience, you can certainly check my YouTube channel. I will be uploading all the games we stream there. And you can also visit the website displayed proudly on your screen here, the After Hours Gaming League website. Uh, they will have all the matches posted there. They will have all the schedules for upcoming matches posted there. And now that the divisions are set, uh, definitely keep an eye on who your favorite teams are and see where they're at in the divisions and see what their odds are like going forward and remember these are not the uh, final divisions these are still teams fighting for the playoff the Viomol division uh, which we do have both of these teams we just watched in will both be going to the playoffs uh, this is just a battle for placement within the uh, within the playoffs for that seed but uh, with all that said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the cast, and I will see you guys next time.